hello my name is Juliana and I am sharing about my journey with a J pouch and the reason why I'm doing this is because when I went through ulcerative colitis and had to get the colectomy surgery for the J pouch it was the videos that I found on Instagram and on YouTube of other people sharing their stories is what really helped get me through and feel hopeful um, and to know that I wasn't alone in everything that I was experiencing. And so I feel like um, sharing my story, if it can be of service in some way, I'm not a medical professional, I'm just sharing my story. Um, so today, one year ago, November 18th, 2020, um, I had my total colectomy surgery at Kelowna General Hospital in Canada. And it was after a long battle with ulcerative colitis. Um, I posted a little bit about that in my previous video. So I'm gonna share um, what it's been like with my J pouch since my surgery. So I had my takedown surgery, the reversal final step done in um, May 17th of this year, 2021. And so it's been six months now that I've been living with the J pouch. It definitely has been an up and down journey for me. Um, I started out with a pretty healthy looking pouch with the scope. Um, I have had colitis in the past and not Crohn's disease, which is why um, people that don't have Crohn's have a better chance of a success rate with the J pouch. So I ended up developing a fistula um, around the reconnection spot um, with the J pouch and with that also um, inflammation in the pouch which gave me some issues with continence and a lot of frequency. And um, so I was trying out different medications for a little while, nothing too strong, but just um, antibiotics. So that I was on, I think, three different kinds of antibiotics um, since June. So um, each time the antibiotics gave me a little bit of relief even just for like one week but then as soon as I went off of them it came back um, and then I this starts wearing on your nerves after a little while I've had to like cancel work and my whole life has really just been centered around taking care of myself as when you're having that many bowel movements your energy gets low and it just affects all of the um, electrolyte balancing in your body, not having a large intestine. Um, we're not absorbing all of the, the salts and the sodium and potassium in the way that the large colon would be absorbing that and balancing those for us. Um, so a lot of electrolyte drinks, a lot of salt, a lot of... <laughs> trying to um, play with the diet and see what works, what doesn't work. I was following, um, trying to stick with gluten-free, no sugar, um, things like that. However, I was eating some rice and grains again and maple syrup, other things that um, are not on the SCD diet. So there's a few different diets quite a few diets out there that people recommend for inflammatory bowel diseases. And what I've noticed is there is a common thread of um, removing grains and sugars from the diet. Some of them are slightly different and allow for different things. Um, what I have noticed um, is uh, quite a few people with the specific carbohydrate diet. So the SCD diet have some success 
in maintaining remission um, if you're quite strict on this SCD diet. I'm not going to go into huge detail about the diet. If you're curious about um, the SCD diet, then you can look that up. They have lists of legal and illegal things that you can eat. Um, and so essentially, a lot of the diets are kind of centered around uh, paleo um, type of diet. So right now, uh, let's just back up a second. <laughs> so um, after my last bout of antibiotics just in October, which didn't seem to be working for um, pouchitis, so I ended up with a fistula and then I ended up developing pouchitis, so inflammation in the J pouch, which is no fun. And so the antibiotics weren't working and I, what happened? I just wasn't feeling well. I, I had a bout of arthritis pain. So unfortunately with autoimmune diseases, um, you know, it can show up in different ways in your body as a response. I had a rheumatoid arthritis attack in my neck in my joints, my knees, everything like was extremely painful to move my body. It was just like a one day kind of um, really painful event that happened in October. And I also had these kind of bumps on my legs. Like I had this really big bump on my ankle that's all gone now, but it was like a big red swollen joint. So anyways, um, that was weird. I went to see a rheumatologist and um, then a one week later I ended up with pancreatitis attack so super fun couple of weeks that was um, ended up back in the hospital two times within two weeks and um, so it was a autoimmune pancreatitis basically my pancreas um, was reacting and having an inflammatory response which is super painful if anyone's ever had um, gallstones or things like that. Anyhow, I made it through that and with the help of, um, you know, a few bright minds, a rheumatologist, my gastroenterologist, um, my surgeon, and they came together and decided that I need to be on prednisone and also um, try another medication, a biologic medication that I will be starting in two weeks called azathioprine. Um, my body hasn't historically responded well to biologics in the past. Um, I failed three of them prior to my colectomy surgery. However, this one is on the mellower side, I believe, or it's kind of mid-range in terms of its intensity. Um, so I'm hoping that I can bless that medication. It can um, help keep me coasting in remission. The last two weeks have been amazing um, since I've been on prednisone, which I don't like prednisone, but um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work on me. This time I think it's working. I've had two really good weeks. I'm just knocking on wood everywhere I go and um, hoping that I can maintain um, some healthy functioning of the pouch, which I have right now. It's been really great, um, just way better control. Um, yeah, like no more accidents, um, just a lot better all around. And it's kind of my first after six months with the J pouch, it's kind of like my first real like sense of bit of normalcy um, in terms of how it feels in my body. The first six months um, just felt really uncomfortable at times. Um, just felt bloated after I ate, felt like I needed to stay close to home all the time. I always need to know where the washrooms are. Um, and yeah, I just wasn't feeling that great. I lost a lot of weight and was quite low um, 
it's just like my body was trying to recalibrate and find its electrolyte balance um, after the surgery. So anyways, autoimmune disease is very mysterious and I don't really know why this is happening in, in my body. I'm doing lots of research and um, trying to eliminate chemicals and toxins from my diet, from my surroundings, trying to really balance my own energy and keep my stress levels at an all-time low, try and just be, um, find the joy in life every day, get out into Mother Nature, just to really reconnect my soul because I know that we are multi-dimensional beings and um, there's only so much we can do with diet um, and we also have to work on our emotional selves and process um, this whole journey and everyone's goes through a journey of sorts and I think that self-care and self-inquiry is um, really powerful and important for me and my healing from all of this. Uh, what else do I want to share? I'm also open to anyone that has specific questions about fistula or J pouch or um, any of like more specifics on medications. If somebody wants to comment or ask me a question, feel free. Um, it just helps so much to have other people out there um, that are that I see who are doing well. Um, even seeing the people that aren't always doing well, at least we know we're not alone in our, in like in and out of the hospital and all of the crap that you go through with um, medical trauma. It just helps to know that there's there's other people that um, you can relate to. And what else do I want to share? So all in all, I, I'm really glad that I did get the J-Pouch surgery. My skin was really sensitive to the adhesive tapes with the ostomy. Um, and I, yeah, I just really wanted the opportunity to, to see if I could make this work. And so I guess my biggest message is just to be patient. That it takes time um, from other J poachers that I've talked to have said that it takes um, a year to two years um, to really adapt for your body to fully adapt to um, the pouch it's about the pouch will adapt to your body and take on more of a role of of the colon function it's incredible how we can heal and adapt so patience, yeah, I am, I've eliminated alcohol from my life um, and sugar and toxic situations. I don't watch the news anymore. <laughs> I'm trying to meditate a lot. Um, there's just so many little things that I think I've, oh yeah, I'm getting the metal fillings taken out of my teeth because uh, I was um, reading about heavy metal toxicity, mercury toxicity, and its connection with autoimmune diseases. So I'm going to be making some changes, um, staying strict on the specific carbohydrate diet right now in hopes to maintain remission. For me, it's worth trying. <laughs> um, for quality of life, it is worth it. It works for me or somebody uh, really tuning in to figure out what your body needs and what is um, it's really trial and error for what is um, serving your energy or what is making you not feel good and yeah that's about all I have to share for now I just want to um, send lots of love to anyone out there who's on this journey, whether you're on it with yourself or with a 
loved one, child, partner. Um, hang in there and things have gotten better for me. So let's celebrate that. Even if it's just two weeks right now, let's just uh, keep your eye on the donut and not the hole. That's what my mom always says. Um, and yes, ask any questions and I'm gonna tune in with another update at some point down the road. Sending love. Namaste.